Adverse weather conditions continue to cause havoc across different parts of the country with the deluge and flash floodings causing displacements and the death of many people. Welcome to Somalia's premier number one station for news and updates, Dalsan TV, the 6th of November 2023. Here are our top stories. Court martial upholds death penalty for tuk tuk driver who killed a soldier. Induction program arms newly rotated ATMIS officers for mission readiness. Over 10 people dead in Somalia following flash floods. Somali security forces execute planned operations in Bakol region. Glad to have you back. Now, the military court in Mogadishu's appeal division today upheld a lower court decision that sentenced a tuk tuk driver to death for shooting dead a police officer earlier this year. I think it's dirty coast in Nigeria. I know not in a Arkarva, Mahkamada, in a Haksor, Tonika, Sita, Dega, a second wheel case, Mrs. Arias. The military court in Mogadishu's appeals division today upheld a lower court decision that sentenced the tuk tuk driver to death for shooting dead a police officer earlier this year. The military appeal court in Mogadishu found Abdullahi Abdi Mustaf guilty of murdering police constable Abdi Karim Ibrahim Ali Odango on December 19, 2022, at a police checkpoint in Mogadishu's Afisioni neighborhood. In February of this year, Mustaf was sentenced to death by the military court of first instance for the murder of the police officer. The court also sentenced another police officer, Dahir Abdi Mustaf, to four years in prison for aiding and abetting the crime. According to the prosecution, Abdullahi Abdi Mustaf was stopped at the checkpoint by Constable Odango, who demanded he produce some form of identification. Infuriated by the demand, Mustaf asked his brother, Dahir Abdi Mustaf, a police officer with the Banadir Police Department for a gun and then shot Constable Odango dead. The court found Abdullahi Mustaf guilty of murder and his brother guilty of abetting murder. The Somali federal government reports that more than 10 people have died in flash floods in the last week, including children. Deputy Prime Minister Ahmed Jama, who visited the Somali National Disaster Management Agency headquarters in Mogadishu, urged the public to affect rather to help those affected. The Somali federal government reports that more than 10 people have died in flash floods in last week, including children. Deputy Prime Minister Saleh Ahmed Jama, who visited the Somali National Disaster Management Agency, SODMA headquarters in Mogadishu, on Sunday, urged Somalis to support those affected by deluge as they are currently battling dire humanitarian conditions. Floods prompted by Juba River breaking its bank have severely impacted several districts in Jubaland State, including Dolo, Bardere, Gaberhari, Lok, Burdubo, and Jamame. The Portland Regional State has confirmed three civilians were killed in heavy rain that fell in Galkaayo town a day ago, and the state is concerned that the actual death toll could be higher. Floods have affected at least 405,652 people since the start of the 2023 seasonal dare, October to December rains, according to the United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Office. Floods have affected at least 405,652 people since the start of the 2023 seasonal day, which is October to December rains, according to the United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, with a majority of casualties occurring in four federal member states. Saleh Ahmed Jama, Deputy Prime Minister, stated the federal government has been working diligently to assist those affected by the floods and heavy rains. The floods follow the worst drought in four decades, which resulted in five failed rainy seasons, decimating livestock and crops and pushing the country back to the brink of famine. The Somali National Army conducted planned operations in Bakol region. The 9th Battalion Commander Major Eunice Aden Hassan told the national media that the operations were conducted in Bakol regions Warwirin, Wardato, Edale and Morigable. Somali National Army conducted planned operations in Bakol region. The 9th Battalion Commander Major Yunis Aden Hassan told the national media that operations were conducted in Bakol regions Warwin, Wardato, Elahale and Morigabe. This follows a statement from Somalia's Defense Ministry declaring the initiation of the second phase of operations against Al-Shabaab militants in the southwest regions. In a statement, the ministry confirmed that the Somali soldiers successfully took control of several villages including Dudumale, Bulo Kajor, Abakbedei, and Isle Garas in the town of Hudur. The capture of these villages by the Somali National Army is a significant milestone 
in the ongoing efforts to counter al-Shabaab's influence in the region. The Minister of Defense says the operation is a critical step towards restoring safety and security to the affected communities. The federal government has unshackled large swathes of land in central Somalia. From al-Shabaab's grip and now the Hassan Sheikh-led administration faces the toughest test in liberating the insurgents from their bastions. Bakol is located in the southwest of Somalia, bordering Ethiopia. The region consists of five districts, with Hudr being its capital. For the past 15 years, the areas have been under the control of Al-Shabaab. Then up special forces reclaimed control of that area in Galgadut by late August this year. According to the state media, then up forces recaptured two other Galgadut localities and launched an attack on the third round at the same time. Ethiopian forces working with the Atmis have made significant progress against Al-Shabaab in southern Somalia too. In June this year, the Somali government has offered amnesty to Al-Shabaab militants amid ongoing military offensive in central parts of the country. The move is seen by some analysts as a way to remove Al-Shabaab fighters from the battlefield, thereby weakening the insurgent group. Twelve staff officers recently deployed to the Africa Union Transition Mission in Somalia Atmis completed their five-day induction successfully, according to a statement from the mission. Twelve staff officers recently deployed to the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia completed their five-day induction successfully, according to a statement from the mission. The induction, which was a collaborative effort between the UN Support Office in Somalia and the United Nations Mine Action Service, ensured a thorough understanding of Atmos's operational and strategic mandate. Major General Peter Muteti, Atmos Deputy Force Commander in charge of support and logistics, confirmed the officers' readiness, citing their thorough briefing on the mission's standard operating procedures and regulatory frameworks. The primary goal of the training was to familiarize the officers with the standards of conduct and the complexities of the operational environment they will encounter in Somalia. Major General Muteti echoed the mission's urgency in moving forward to the next phase of operations, with an eye on reducing the threat of al-Shabaab and bolstering the capabilities of the Somali security forces. At the opening ceremony, Atmis Military Chief of Staff Major General Kindu Gezu highlighted the pivotal moment the officers are entering as Atmis prepares for a significant phase of drawdown, emphasizing the significant role each officer plays in the mission's success. The multinational team of officers from Eswatini, Kenya and Uganda will manage day-to-day -day operations at the force headquarters in Mogadishu for the next year. Lovely viewers, that's all we are prepared for you tonight from our desk in Mogadishu. I wish to thank the team that made the news bulletin a success and you are lovely viewer wherever you're watching us from. Have yourselves a lovely night and blessings galore.